Welcome to Crimson Guitars, welcome to my home studio, and welcome to a guitar build. Now, I was recently at the Birmingham Guitar Show, the UK Guitar Show, the, the big kahuna of UK guitar shows. It was fantastic and inspirational. I, I saw some incredible guitars, and I was blown away by Rosie at Turnstone Guitars. She had by far the best instrument in the entire building. It was mind-blowing. I was literally grabbing people I was talking to and saying, hey, come and check out this guitar, it's amazing. Her fretwork on this particular instrument inspired and shamed me in equal measures. And uh, in this video, I'm gonna try and see if I can up my own game. I've built hundreds of guitars and that means nothing. There is always an improvement to be made. Let's get on with it. Burn it. Perfect! I've got a clean fretboard, I've got the frets that are in. If you are going to get the other method to get perfectly hemispherical, semi-hemispherical, semi-hemispherical uh, fret ends, it's to do them before the fret ends go in. And uh, that is, that is the, uh, probably actually the proper technique. But many of us are here watching this video because, hey, we want to get semi-hemispherical frets. Did you see how fast I said that? Uh, on our own guitars that we didn't fret ourselves. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm gonna do it with simple, basic, good quality tools. Do not buy budget guitar building tools. Fret crowning file, fret leveling, beam, fret end dressing file, which is, we're gonna spend a lot of time with that today. It's gonna to be fun. Need to roll over the, uh, the fretboard as well. So the edge of this fretboard is nice and sharp. Nice and sharp, it is sharp. And our frets, are going right up to the edge of that. I'm going to continue beveling a little bit more, which I normally do. Uh, I'm gonna change the fret and the position of the top of the fret by taking off the edge of the fretboard. Now, a way to do it is to bevel, is to leave the fret exactly where it is, which does not make the playing surface any narrower, and you just put a bevel on the fretboard itself. And you could you could do this, well, this is, yeah, it's literally just a case of going in. But you end up with a step at the fret end. There is no right way, there is no method that is absolutely foolproof, but uh, starting with a slightly old fretboard will give you a better result, in my opinion. Fight me in the comments. Let's protect the guitar itself first. And I'm gonna be using a Crimson Guitars Frick leveling file. And you can hear that I'm touching the wood as well as the metal. See, it's a very gentle look. but comfy. So doing the other side, put my fingers on this from underneath, and that's to stop the, the file from hitting the guitar there. All right, leveling beam. 240 grit. I'm just uh, polishing the edges of the frets at this point, making life easier for me later on. And again, I'm rolling, not putting a bevel. Thank you. 
With that done, I've pre-sanded, I've got the bevel, I've got the round over done, not a bevel, on with the permanent marker. At this stage, I am not going to be masking the fretboard off. It's ebony, and with ebony's and rosewoods, etc., you can go much of the way through the leveling and crowning process before you need to mask off, uh, i.e. at the end when you're buffing stuff. Uh, now, the reason for this is that when I get down to doing the fret ends, etc., I want the safe edge of this file to be on the fretboard itself rather than raised up on some masking tape. Before we do any leveling, it is a notched straight edge uh, to read the fretboard itself, make sure the neck is perfectly flat. I'll use the truss rod to adjust that to get to that point. Now, being a baritone, the scale length is wrong for the notched straight edges. So I'll use the longer scale length and put it over the second fret. I will still be able to read most of the, of the neck. And uh, in fact, this is this is this is perfectly flat. On with the leveling. Without putting too much pressure on the neck, I am going to hold my hand under here to feel if it bounces up and down. I'm just gently, and I'm just taking the top off each fret. If I remove all of the marking, uh, the permanent marker, then I can stop, and that would then mean even less crowning. And uh, if there is permanent marker left, then that means I've got on that fret just a little bit of a low spot. So that there is a low spot. You can see on the next one I've taken the, uh, taken the top off the fret. The more we take off, the more crowning there is to do. This is a gentle process, even though you are removing metal. I've got some frets that need nothing, basically, and some that need proper crowning. It's all good. So that fret there, we've got a nice clean line, almost exactly the same uh, width down the entire length of the fret. And uh, that's pretty much perfect. So half a millimeter or so for good intonation down the center. Others are a lot fatter. And uh, that's the thing. So I need to make this all nice and nice and even. Fretboard protector. And with a traditional triangular crowning file, which as you can see I use for all sorts of different things. I come in and essentially create a flat topped pyramid. Now, if you want to be uh, doubly sure that you're doing right, put on some more permanent markup and go for it. And we want a line that is down the center. And about uh, half a millimeter wide. I'm not rounding things over at this point. I'll do that later in the polishing. Now these frets are uh, Evo Gold. They're hypoallergenic. They're goldish colored. Uh, bronze, I suppose, actually. And uh, they're very hard. Not quite as hard as stainless steel, I don't think. I might be wrong. Uh, but very hard and harder to work. So there's a, a little bit more work involved, probably another 15, 20% worth of time. Uh, but uh, Crimson Tools are perfectly capable of dealing with these and stainless, and you know, it's, it's absolutely fine. Again, with the masking tape, that just makes things easier. Now the edges of this fret are, it's essentially a flat topped, flat topped pyramid, but as I polish, it's going to round over and be subtle and comfortable. Now, on to the rest of them.
just occurred to me that the, the bronze frets I'm doing are the same same material as the uh, uh, Vertex watch I've got here. Check, check Vertex out. They are awesome. I'm doing, by the way, a watch-inspired guitar build very soon. I'm, I'm excited about this. With that done, I've got a level fretboard, I hope, and they are mostly crowned. I'm now going to check with the fret rocker. So essentially, if, if this fret is high, it'll rock, or if that fret is low, it'll rock. And then by going on to the next one, you'll see which of the two issues you've got. In this case, no issues at all. Perfect. Let's do the fret ends now. This uh, fret end finishing file has got a perfectly flat edge that's safe on one side and a slightly rounded edge that's safe on the other. And then a very fine file and at this point, I'm going to be rounding and creating the hemispherical or semi-hemispherical ends. I'm trying to match my curve up to the end of where the flat spot is on the top of the fret. And yeah, so we've got the flat side there and then you round it over. All it is is about taking time and making sure you're absolutely happy with what you've got. So if you've got a little bit of an edge there, go flat. Okay. Now I can use the fret end dressing file to take the bottom corner off the fret. So that bottom corner there, that was created by the height of the uh, fret protector. So my, my crowning file only cuts the height of that plus the height of the safe edge. So I now need to go back in and using the very, very, very safe edge here, just round that over. I'm faceting it, basically. Now you can do this from the other side. Get the same thing. Create your half round. and then round it over with the safe edge. Some people find this easier. I, yeah, I prefer doing over the edge, personally. Wrap some five or 600 grit wet and dry paper around the fret rubber. And I'm gonna use a fretboard protector for now. And this is the first bit of polishing. Okay. Now don't do this with uh, sandpaper that's too coarse, please. 
whatever you do, we don't want to damage the fretboard and don't do it on fretboards that have uh, a finish on them. So maple, maple fretboards, etc. Okay, once you've done that, then you can move on to fret rubbers. And this works on the fretboard as well. Yeah, I'm really happy with that. So pre-doing anything and post. Now this is only one fret and it's only done up to the medium grit on the fret rubber. I can carry on, I can carry on and do this with the fine and super fine, etc. But the plan is to mask the fretboard off and then do the final polish. But even as we go, that's already far more comfortable than most fret jobs I've ever done. It's all about time. Time and focus. And experience. And good tools. And uh, hyper caffeination. I need to mask off this fretboard. Uh, now I'm using machine buffer because it does get a better result. Okay, I'm gonna hang this guitar up out of the way for now. The next stage the next stage is to drop my strepsils on the floor. <clears throat> I've got a, a great big record power uh, grinder, uh, RSBG6, six inch grinder. I've put a block of wood on the bottom because at the moment it's a fairly mobile tool. I'm gonna need some PPE. Goggles for one and a dust mask. 
now I'm going to shut up, put the isotunes in. Crimson 10, get uh, get 10% off your isotunes. Uh, yeah, I'm a fan. You will be too. You will see that uh, I am buffing the frets from the center of the fretboard to the edge. Uh, this is both to reduce the risk of ripping the masking tape off, and it also reduces the risk of me pulling the guitar out of my hands. So, yeah. <laughs> demask it all and uh, move on to the fretboard. We just need to uh, use the crimson fretboard cleaner and then the crimson restorative. The other thing that we all know but bears repeating is don't leave masking tape on too long. Uh, I had a few days break in between uh, the initial stages of this uh, crowning process and uh, I could have masked up uh, everything off camera but uh, that masking tape would then have been left on the guitar for, uh, for a long weekend and I didn't want to do that. Oh yes. And then we've got the crimson fretboard and finish cleaner. Oop. Ah, there we go. And then as a final pass, I'm going along the length of the frets. Fretboard restorative. This stuff lasts forever. I am, I don't build as many guitars here as uh, many of you do. And uh, I've still got the original 50 mil restorative that I've had for a long time. This is not petroleum-based lemon oil. We are not actively drying out the fretboard. We are not going to be losing 98% of uh, what we're applying just to it off-gassing into the atmosphere and uh, into your luthier's lungs. This is a high-quality non-drying oil that will penetrate and then when you've got enough on there, it will just sit and you're going to have to buff off the excess. This adds moisture to the fretboard. It is long lasting. It is uh, non-destructive to you or to the atmosphere. I wouldn't drink it, but you could massage yourself with it if you so chose. 
I'm going to uh, wipe off the excess now. And this is a well, well moisturized fretboard now. It's nice and clean. The frets are nice and shiny. I could not be happier. Frets anyone? And the best thing is it really is very, very comfy. And there we have it. I am incredibly happy with how these frets have turned out. It's incredibly comfortable. They're super shiny. The semi-hemispheres, while I'm sure I can do better, are the best that I've ever done to this point. Uh, I, I, the, process of, the process of improving one's uh, self and one's skills, it's, it's what keeps me going and coming back and doing these things. Uh, I know I can build a guitar, but I also know with every single one that I do that I can do better. And that challenge excites me. I hope that you have uh, enjoyed this. I hope that you've learned something. Uh, please click like, please subscribe, share this with all of your friends, hit the bell icon and all of that good stuff. You know the drill, the drill, the drill. The real, what's a real? You know the drill. I'll see you guys soon. Have a good week. This is the penultimate video. The next one, the baritone, will be finished. Can't wait. Goodbye.